Hi folks, this is Tasty Bento, and I'm going to be doing a deep dive into the Java code of the Skyblock. And this will cover how you can write a game mode add-on, which is a special type of add-on for Bento Box that enables the creation of a game world and also to indicate that this is actually a specific game mode rather than just a generic add-on. So I've opened up the bSkyBlock project here, and the main class is called bSkyBlock.java. And if we just look at how this flows, you'll see that it has a lot of similarities to the bucket API, and in, in particular, the plugin API for that. And we modeled the API very much over the same concepts. So first of all, there are three methods that must be overridden in a game mode add-on. And you can see that uh, bSkyBlock is extending the game mode add-on here, which is what a game mode is. So the three parts that a game mode does is it creates worlds, it registers world settings, and it has schemes that are related to those worlds. Okay, so uh, let's look at these three initial methods. These are uh, the standard ones that you see on bucket. We've got onload, on enable and on disable. And on load will be run when the add-on is loaded at the very beginning. On enable is run after all other add-ons have been loaded, then on enable is run. And obviously when the server is shutting down or Bentobox is shutting down, on disable will be called. The other mandatory methods that are required for a game mode are create worlds and get world settings. And create worlds obviously creates the worlds that this game mode is responsible for. And in this case, you can see broadly speaking, it creates a, an overworld. It then creates another world and an end world if those settings are set. And then in terms of world settings, these are just uh, of type world settings, which in and of itself is an API uh, of, type, of the type configuration. So just going back up to the top, let's have a look at what's happening here. We have the uh, own internal reference to uh, be skyblock that is available if required. We then have settings and settings is a class that uh, we'll take a look at. And you'll see that in terms of settings, the settings are very, very similar to bucket. If you call the save default config method, that will save the default config out of the jar file if it doesn't exist already. It's exactly the same as buckets. So we often use that to get the initial file out of the jar onto the file system. After you've done that, we can load it. And there's different ways that you can load it. First of all, you could, if you wish, just use the regular bucket API and just use get config and all this sort of thing. That's absolutely fine. You can do that. Alternatively, if you want to be able to support a dynamic configuration or uh, you want to have a way to retain comments in the config file, which is one thing that we really wanted, then uh, you can use this settings class concept, which is essentially where the settings are loaded into a class, very similar to the way that Java Bean works or the way that classes work in tools like Hibernate and things like that. So it's basically a plain old Java object to, uh, get can get loaded with these values. And we do that using the config class and defining that we want to uh, operate on the settings class that is here. And then we want to, after we've created a new config class of type settings, then we load it. And, and we that's how we get all the settings loaded. So let's have a look at the settings class. So in the settings class, you'll see that there's a lot of annotations and these are there to make the comments and also to define where things should be placed within the config file, and also where the config file itself should be placed. So the very first annotation is a store at, and this defines that the, the name of this file is going to be config.yml, and then it's going to be stored in this path. And this is explicitly, you have to tell it to do that. That's exactly where you want to put the config file if you're using this approach. After that, you can have as many config comments as you want. These obviously go at the top of the file, and you can see that we have a, a number of them. And we also have a placeholder here, which is a version, which will get converted into the version of the application so that you can keep a track of things. And that's automatically inserted during the time when this file is saved. Moving to the class itself, there are actually two 
two interfaces that it must implement. Uh, the first one is data object. This enables it to be saved and loaded in this way using the config. And that requires, uh, this, it indicates first of all that that is exactly what it is. And secondly, it does impose two mandatory methods that must be implemented uh, around the unique identifier of this data object. And we'll look at that a bit later. The second thing that the second interface that it must implement is world settings and world settings is related to this game mode. It contains world specific settings, as it said, and there's no need to actually do any setting through this because this is really for Bento Box to be able to read settings about this world. However, you'll probably need to have setters of your own in order to set these. OK, so looking through these, this basically tracks the actual config file. And if I open up the config file in a editor, you'll see that is uh, very much what it looks like. So you can see the, the same text here. You can see then it goes into the world segment. And a couple of things that I should mention is that the ordering of this file is the order that it will actually be stored in the YML file. So if you want specific things at the top, then you, in your code, you should put them at the top that it, it basically works from top to bottom. And uh, that's a ni nice sort of uh, feature in terms of organization. So there we have the config config, uh, for example, uh, friendly name of this world using admin commands, must be a single world. And you'll see that it's been placed in the world.friendly name, and this is YML sy syntax. And if we have a look at the file, you can see it's in the world friendly name. So there it is. Now, the default value for this, this is in the code here, it's bSkyBlock. And there are ways to actually define a number of uh, additional elements in these uh, annotations. But for now, if you have a default, put it in here. A couple of things to notice is you can use enums if you wish. And a lot of the standard types will be supported. So ints obviously are supported. And uh, the game mode itself, uh, that's a bucket game mode, by the way, uh, survival. Biome, so all the all the uh, bucket types are supported. However, if you create your very own type using your own class, you may have to actually define a way for that to be serialized and deserialized. And I'll cover that in a different tutorial. But for by and large, uh, this is a very straightforward. All that we're really doing here is setting the config comments, and we're identifying uh, where these should be. Just as an example of a serializer that already exists in the system, uh, you can see the flag. So in this particular uh, part of the file, these are the default protection settings, and that is using the BentoBox flags. And if we have a look at the file, you can actually see them. Uh, let's see, there we go. So we have these flags, and you can see the settings here, and you can see the default island settings here. And those are serialized and deserialized. Obviously, flag is, is not a type that is known in Java. So this is a flag serializer. And uh, if we actually have a look at that uh, class, we'll just open it up. This exists already in the bento box code. And it's a uh, it implements the adapter interface. And you must uh, define two methods, deserialize and serialize. Anyway, I'll, I'll go over that in another uh, tutorial, but uh, that's just a quick example of how custom classes are serialized. Uh, it's defined by the adapter annotation there. And we have a couple of those or a few of those in this example. So just uh, looking through the rest of the settings file, I don't see anything else. Once you've defined all your various comments and your fields, then there's one more field that you must absolutely positively identify, and that's the unique ID. In the case of a config file, there is only one config file, so this unique ID will be, you can call it anything you like, but I recommend just call it config. The mandatory method from data object is get unique ID and set unique ID. The mandatory fields for world settings, there's a, there's a lot of them. And so we can just have a quick look at those. So I'll, I'll show you data object first, just to show how simple that is. Those are the only two mandatory methods that you must implement there. And for a config file, they can be hard coded essentially. And then for world settings, right? So these are the settings of the worlds that we saw previously in the config file. So once you've implemented that in your settings, then you have your settings all done and we can go back. So we now have loaded these settings. And the next part that will be run will be on enable. 
And typically there's not much to do here. It's, it's really up to you what you want to do. In B Skyblock, we register the islands. On uh, Acid Island, if I just open up that one, you'll be able to see what happens there is that we actually register some events around acid effect to make sure, you know, if it's acid rain or if you're in water, also have a listener around the creation of lava. And then we register the commands and start the tasks off to burn people if they get into the water and things like this. But on bSkyBlock, it's very simple. We're just registering two commands. Uh, typically, a game mode will have player commands, a, pay a player top level command. In this, in this case, it's just island. And then we also have the admin command. Finally, the disable side of things, really, it's up to you. You could just close it, or you may want to save the settings, which is what happens on bSkyBlock, because the settings can change in the game. They can be adapted in the game and we want to be able to save them and of course we want to be able to save them with the co comments still remaining so that's why we're using this config and so to save settings in this instance we use the config class of type settings which is defined and then we just save it uh, save the settings object here the rest of the code is really quite simple we just got a, a getter here for the settings used elsewhere uh, get of the instance and then the create worlds, which I ran over before, which is just creating the worlds. All you have to do is create the worlds. You don't have to do anything else um, because they will automatically be added to bento box. And finally, the world settings. You just need to supply that settings object and it must be of type world settings. So once you've done all of that, you've basically done your game mode. For the rest of the code on bSkyBlock, we have some commands which are related to either admin commands or the island command. We have an about command. Uh, we also have a generator, which uh, generates the world, which is a void, so it doesn't really have to do much at all. Just sets it as all air, and there is a little option to have sea height, uh, so you can add some water there, but that's about it. It's more complex on the nether side of things. And that is it. So. The, the B sky block is actually very, very minimal. I'll just uh, now quickly go over a couple of the commands. So the island command, it extends this abstract class called composite command. Now composite command is a great API that enables you to make really simple uh, or, or simply make commands that will run. And uh, so when you instantiate it in the constructor, you call the super, you have to pass it what is the add-on that is making this, and then pass the main command. So this is actually the, the, the regular command that you want to do. And then following, you can have as many aliases as you want. So you could you know, add additional aliases here, whatever you want. So once you've done that, the there are a couple of other mandatory methods here. The first one is setup. This gets called immediately when this is run. And the second one is execute. And this obviously gets called when a command is executed. So let's have a look at setup. For setup, you need to do a few things. These again are not mandatory. There is a set description. So what this does is it defines where in the locale file will the description, the help description be for this particular command. And so we have uh, this particular description is in commands island help description. We then also have a call to indicate that this is only a player command. So that's very simply set only player, true. And you'll be able to contrast that with the admin command where there is set only player false. Um, you don't have to really say that, but just explicitly it makes it clear. So let's go back to the uh, island command. We then set up a number of subcommands, and these are actually defined in bento box to enable, not all of them, the about command is explicitly called out here, but things like info, create, go, reset, set name, these are all uh, existing already in the bento box API and are available for you to use in your own game modes. And uh, you can pick and choose exactly which ones you want to use. You don't have to use all of them. And if you do use them, then they will appear in the help. And uh, finally, we've got the team command. And the team command, uh, if you include the team command, it will automatically include a number of uh, sub-team commands in it already. And so uh, you can actually see how the team command itself 
in the setup includes a lot of these subcommands which leave, invite, and things like this. For the execute, the execute has a number of parameters that are given and it differs slightly to the bucket one in that we have this concept of a user. Now a user is different to player. It is a user, it could be, it basically combines offline player and player into one and also command center all into one. So it could be a console, it could be an offline player that's only defined by the UUID, it could be a player, an online player, but it enables you to send messages to all of these uh, and it also enables the localization to work really well. And so when in your code, whenever possible, you should really be using user instead of player for your various uh, activities. The second parameter that we'll pass to you is, is the label. Uh, this is actually uh, the label that was used to execute the command. So that could be, it could be island, it could be is or whatever. And finally, you've got your arguments, and that's just a string list of arguments that you can check if they exist or not, and if they do, you can do something with them. So Bento Box will automatically handle subcommands and help for you. So you don't have to, you'll notice there's no help concept here that's automatically generated, and also there is no uh, need, to, apart from defining your subcommands here, there's no additional code to define subcommands. So let's just have a quick look at the tab complete. So I will open up a uh, example of a tab complete. Let's look at the team invite command. So uh, team invite command, it's only a player command. It has a description and we can initialize some variables in the setup as well. And there's the execute, there's the invite. And here's another optional override that you can uh, add, which is for tab complete. And tab complete re returns a, an optional list string of arguments that are generated. And this is a, just a fairly standard tab complete that uh, grabs the online player list. In this case, we've actually provided a utility function to grab online player list that the user can see. Uh, so every user may have visibility. So if they are, for example, a regular player and they're not allowed to see ops who are invisible, then this list will make sure that they don't see them. So that's a, an initial API there. And so uh, you just return that. So there, there's an example of the tab complete. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe.